Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme two, element one, rural urban continuum. Take your seats, I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Settlements are places where we live. They're often being categorized as being either rural or urban. So rural settlements are characterized by having low populations and very few services and out in the countryside. Whereas in comparison, urban areas are characterized by having high population density a vast variety of different services and their built up areas, the cities and towns. So let's have a look at what we mean in terms of the continuum. So it's very easy to think of rural and urban as being two completely opposing factors as pictured here in this diagram. So you're either in an urban area, so this orange circle represents being in a city. As soon as you step over this line, you're in the countryside, you're in the rural. In reality, it doesn't work like that. So this one or the other is called a dichotomy. And in the UK, probably around the world, there'll be very few places where the city will just stop and you're straight into the countryside. Now a continuum means that there is a long line in terms of extremes. So you'll have one side of the continuum, which is the most build up you can ever be. So let's think of this in terms of national uh, national capital cities in the UK this largest place might be somewhere like London as you start to move away from London you get into the wider urban areas so places that aren't part of London but because they're so close they've just merged into each other so think of the outlying boroughs of London or even some of the larger cities just outside of London and as you start to move further and further away from the major cities the amount of tall buildings starts to reduce so you end up having more houses residential and as you start moving away even further out then you start to see more open land but there's still quite a few houses until you get even further out and you see mostly fields but you can see a few villages in the distance and you keep going further and further out until you're stood in the middle of nowhere and you can only see maybe a single house on its own in the distance and that's the the, the most rural that you can get. So it's not like you're stepping out of the city and you're completely into the rural areas. It is a line that you're going to go through from really, really developed, tall buildings, really cramped and packed together, moving slightly outwards, buildings getting smaller and more spaced apart until you see mostly greenery and you can't see any built up areas whatsoever. So that's a continuum. And this is more like what most locations around the world are like. It's not one or the other. So we categorize settlements along this continuum as there are many settlements that show both rural and urban features at some point through them. Uh, sitting in between the extremes of a lone house in the countryside to an expanding metropolis such as a capital city. Now each of these is going to have what's called a sphere of influence. So that's the ability to attract people to visit or come to that location. So our larger cities are going to have a much larger sphere of influence and our small little villages and hamlets are going to have a much smaller one. So let's have a look at this in terms of a diagram. So a sphere of influence diagram here, we've got three different settlements. We've got C, B and A. And we're going to try and put these in a local context to make it a bit easier to understand. So our C village here, we're going to name Heaven. Now, heaven does have a sphere of influence, but it's mainly going to be the people that live in that area. So you can imagine going to Heaven Newtown. Are you going to have people from Newcastle coming to Heaven Newtown to shop? No. Would you have people from Argyle Street or Luke's Lane come to shop? Yes. Okay, because they're local to that area. So they would go there for maybe their weekly shop. It might be to go down for a pint of milk, get the newspaper. Things that are low order goods, very cheap and things you'd need on a regular, regular basis. Now you'll notice that Heaven's sphere of influence also overlaps with B's. Now we're going to call B South Shields. South Shields is a town, it's larger than Heaven. And because it's larger, it also means it's going to have more services. So South Shields has a major bus station there. So you might go there to get onto the major bus station. It could be because there's more shops available. There's a wider variety of restaurants. You can go down to um, near South Shields for the hospital and things like that. 
So you might travel from Heaven to South Shields to do your bigger shop because there's a few more supermarkets there and there's a bigger choice than just the Asda. It could be that you're traveling there via the Metro because it's easier to do that. But you notice that because South Shields is bigger, it's sphere of influence is bigger as well because it's got more to offer the wider area, which includes Heaven. Now, the biggest circle is A. Now, I've already named that Newcastle. It could be Sunderland as well. And the reason why it is or Newcastle's sphere of influence is so big is because as a major city, it has a lot more to offer. It has a larger population, so it needs to be able to, uh, to offer things to that population. So off the, top of, uh, off the top of my head, you've got St. James's Park, which uh, the football grounds, which is going to be a major attraction. You've got Eldon Square, as well as a host of different types of entertainment. So think of cinemas. You've also got a wider variety of well-known shops, as well as independent shops. You've got the university there as well that's going to attract students. So the sphere of influence for Newcastle is going to be much wider and it's going to attract a lot of different types of people for different reasons. You could go even one bigger. So New, uh, Newcastle will have people going f uh, from the Central Station and taking the train maybe further north to Edinburgh, capital city of Scotland, or going further south either to London, our capital city, or it could be to one of the regional centres such as Manchester or Leeds because they're going to have an even bigger sphere of influence and they're going to attract people. But just like us, you on a day-to-day -day basis are not going to go to Newcastle every single day to go for your pint of milk. You're more likely to go to Newcastle to go and get that one-off thing that you don't need every so often. So it might be for a new pair of trainers that you can't get somewhere else. It might be for a new TV. It could be for maybe a bigger shop that you only do once a fortnight or once a month. Same again, going down to Leeds and Manchester. You're not going to go and do that every single week. You do it for the one-off things. But their sphere of influence is much bigger because they've got more to offer. Well, that's it for today. But continue your own revision by completing the Now Try It task for homework. Class dismissed.